Howdy folks and welcome to a super special fun time edition of a throwback show. This is Retro Wrestling Night. Can you believe it? First one that we've done of these in probably 12 years or I don't know how long it's been. It's been a while. It's been a long ass time but as always I'm Uncle Bill. And I'm the Creepy Kentucky and this was requested from our Patreon baller and shot caller. Good old Curly Jaws. Curly Jaws again. And I gotta admit, at first when he first said this, I thought he was fucking with us again. There's I think he's always fucking with us. <laughs> WrestleMania 22, big time, in uh, you know Metal Man City of uh, home city of Chicago from 2006. And offhand, I remembered one thing from this show when I just looked at the card. And that would be the, the hardcore match, which we'll talk about all of these. Yeah. Uh, with uh, Mankind, or, well, Mick Foley and Edge. I definitely recall that one. But everything else, eh. You know, I was watching wrestling around this time period, but... We all I think were, yeah. It, the brand split thing, there was... A lot of stuff that was on SmackDown that I did not remember at all. I don't think I was watching SmackDown religiously back then. There were only two matches on this, that I, or two angles, I guess, that I remember. And uh, like you were saying, the uh, Edge and Mick Foley match was one of them, and then the uh, Mickey James and Trish Stratus match was the other. Ooh, like I remember God. that vividly. <laughs> We'll talk about those individually yeah. too, yeah. But um, another thing too we were talking about that we definitely recall from this one is the Peter Gabriel song Big Time, which they played to death back in the day, hyping this show up and during the show and even after the show. I don't know if it was where it's such an odd song because it had absolutely nothing to do with like rock or metal, which is usually what they did on these shows. But yeah, like I... Specifically, remember that I'm gonna fucking kill somebody with this fucking dog. I swear to God. I need to let that little dog rest. Hold on. God damn shit. Me off. Listen, hey. Go in there and point at Hey! I'm what do, punch what does a man have to do for some peace and quiet? <laughs> That's an actual quote. Oh, that was great. Okay, anyway. So, let's just go ahead and get into it. This is a four-hour show. I don't even remember them doing four-hour shows back then, but evidently they did. Um, I don't either. I don't either, but, yeah, I mean, now they do eight-hour shows, so... And oddly enough, yeah, the, on the Peacock version of this, which is what I watched, they cut off the 18-man battle royal, which may have been on the pre-show. I'm not really sure. So with the pre-show, this would have been five hours long. But I did watch I did watch the battle royal. It's on YouTube uh, because I wanted to see, kind of get a taste of who all was around at this point in time 2006 <laughs> some of this is hilarious some of these guys like i hadn't thought about in probably 20 years um, or however long this was interpromotional because they did have raw and smackdown separate you know way back then even um let's go through them psychosis and this was the unmasked psychosis <laughs> right um in the mexicals which, can you believe they did that way back in, you know, that, that was even acceptable 15 years ago? No, but that's great. Eugene? Any that's another gimmick. That, no, other than like, well, actually, there. the one memory I have of Eugene is before, like, you know, he became Eugene when, uh, wasn't he with uh, Ohio Valley? 
Like before that. Yeah, I think he was helping train people. That's what I was thinking. Even before, yeah, he was in WWE and after as well. Um, Big Daddy V, Viscera. You remember that shit he used to wear? That's the one thing I can always remember. Like, he had the fucking, like, straps right there in his titties. And just, like, well, hang yeah, that, over him. That was when he was Big Daddy V. This was pre-Big Daddy V. This was right around the... I think he... Wasn't he the love mach- the world's largest love machine or something like this? Something this like point? that, yeah. Yeah. Gold Dust was here. It seems like Gold Dust is always around. Yeah. Um, Cade and Murdoch, which Trevor Murdoch is in the NWA yeah. um, now Did- as a main eventer. Snitsky, Gene Snitsky. That's a name that I hadn't thought about in forever. Tyson Tomko. Another <laughs> A blast from the past. Yep. Paul London and um, what the hell? I can't. He's running through the hallway with one of them fucking pop things, you know, like that you push and it fucking pops. I don't know what to do. I can't. Everybody just shut the fuck up, just for one night. God, got a fucking old pomeranian in there. <laughs> Barking his head off, <laughs> running through the hallway with fucking. Won't you get a lawnmower out of the fucking garage and just run it through there? The leaf blower. The leaf blower. God damn. Oh shit. <sighs> <laughs> that reminds me. My fucking shit. brother in law's having a baby in July. Yeah. And we went to, uh, God bless, what's the name of it? It's it's some big baby store in Lexington. It has about any damn thing you could think of. There's bye several. bye baby or something like that. Something like that, yeah. So they have the little pop thing like he had. The little thing you roll around, it just pops up shit and makes noise or whatever. Yeah. And they had... They had one that was right beside of it, and I fucking come out here just getting it for myself because it just fucking cracked me up. <laughs> it was a damn duck that had. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen it that like flips that, its arms yeah, and it's shit? Yeah, like it's yeah, its yeah. legs and shit and the run. And I was like, God, that thing's just so killer. I could sit there and watch that all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had one of those at one time. I'm surprised he ain't run through the hallway with that too. But anyway, um, back uh, yeah. to the to the mini Royal Rumble, the eighteen man battle royale. Um, Brian Kendrick and Paul London they had a tag team at one point in time. Um, Eminem, Molina, and uh, uh, Nitro, uh, and uh, Matthews or something like that. I can't remember. And Molina was the manager though, right? Yeah, at that time. Um, who was the other one? Fuck, I can't remember. I don't know either. Uh, Shofunaki. Of course. Animal, without any makeup or anything, they just called him the Road Warrior. Now, that's what I was asking Garrett. I think Garrett remembered that. I did not recall that gimmick at all. I remember that either. Evidently, it was some sort of short-lived thing where he was a heel on SmackDown. And it was after the Heidenreich thing. So Heidenreich and him had already broke up as a tag team. And he was just a a singles wrestler called the Road Warrior. I don't, that must have just been like two weeks or something. He did that. It didn't last. I don't think it lasts very long. It was like maybe three or four months. Um, Simon Dean. Y'all remember him, I'm sure. Mm, William was. Regal. Uh, super what crazy. What was that? He was just... He was just William Regal. He didn't have a gimmick. Oh, okay. Uh, Super Crazy, uh, who was also in the Mexicals. Rob Conway and Stevie Richards were the, you know, it's kind of a bottom of the barrel 18 man battle royal. I wouldn't <laughs> be able to tell you who, you know, who won that offhand if I didn't know. Um, I don't know. But yeah. Um, what? Any, no. 
fuck? Like, there's nobody in that match that was worth the shit. <laughs> like, that's one of the funniest battle royals ever. Yeah, the, um, Viscera actually won this. Yeah. And he defeated Snitsky. So the only thing that I can remember about Snitsky was the angle that, didn't he have an angle one time? Where he, like, killed a baby or something like that. Yeah, it was like a, he punk kicked a baby into the crowd or... Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was, of course, fake or whatever. They didn't act like it was real, but... Yeah, I think it was a deal where... Uh, didn't something something happen with... Lita was supposed to be pregnant with Kane's baby. Yeah, yeah. And then he and hit some, her, knocked her off the apron, I think. Like, somehow or another, Snitsky, I think, hit her. I, I think it was accidental. Knocked her off the apron, and she had, like, a miscarriage. They right. actually had that as an angle back then. Yeah. That fucking Lita had a miscarriage, and, like... And they had Snitsky be, like, the fucking baby killer. It's like, the, an angle for a period of time. But, yeah, this... The, the, uh. the Battle Royal thing was not on pay-per-view. I don't think. I think that was just on, like, the pre-show. Yeah, so if you watch so. it on Peacock with the 18 fucking commercials they have on there, um, the actual pay-per-view starts off with the tag team uh, championship match. And I don't recall n- none of this shit going down. I don't recall either of these guys being in a tag team together. It was uh, the masterpiece Chris Masters and Carlito <laughs> versus Big Show and Kane for <laughs> the tag team championships. I can't think of a worse fucking idea for a match in my worst nightmares than to put those people together. The Big Show and Kane and Carlito and Chris Masters. <laughs> think about kick, that. You're going to kick the pay-per-view off that way. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, the, the Big Show and uh, Kane retain the, the tag titles. Something I was curious about here, too, because later on they would have SmackDown tag titles as well. But it looks like this was just the Raw tag titles. So I can't recall the history of the belts. If just you know, if there was just one set of tag belts at the time or what the deal was. The announcers on this real quick, there's two sets of announcers, Michael Cole and Taz and uh, JR and uh, uh, Lawler. Jerry I the think Lawler. that... Uh... What um, shit? Joey Styles was an announcer for one match, wasn't he? Like I'm trying to remember. What I think match it was, was the hardcore match. Yeah. 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 Um. So um, yeah. Next up, they had an interpromotional Money in the Bank match, and this is something that I really miss from WrestleMania because I think starting a year or two after this pay per view, they started doing the Money in the Bank pay per view. And they would only have the Money in the Bank matches on the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, which I think is stupid. You don't need to do that. I actually remembered some of this match, like when I actually went back and watched it, because, um, first of all, it was fucking awesome. But second of all, there's a whole gimmick in the middle of it that they used to do constantly with Flair that they hadn't done, I don't think, in a long time they did in this match. So when the match starts out, Flair gets injured, supposedly and like goes to the back and they're like you know oh god you know he's gonna have to like be out of the match or whatever and then like halfway through the fucking match comes back out <laughs> yeah and like just starts attacking people and shit it's great flair yeah he, he didn't really fit in there was a couple of guys that didn't really fit in this match because you yeah. knew they weren't really i mean they're either going to get seriously hurt if they try to do anything or they're just not going to do anything um, it was Matt Hardy, Sheldon Benjamin, Fit Finley, RVD, Bobby Lashley, who's one of the very few that's still there, oddly enough, Ric Flair. Um, and this, of course, yeah, this was a great... RVD was awesome in these type yeah, of matches. He was super he, fucking over at that time, too. Like, I forgot how over he was because that crowd was, like, insane for him. Like, most of the people in there either like had like a RVD sign or something they were like chanting. So, I mean, he was as over at that time as he ever, ever was. And it mm-hmm. was awesome. 
Um, but I, don't, our, I think they, they pretty much killed all that, but, uh, you know. Well, some of that's probably his fault, though. I mean, RVD won, of course, and then he would go on to challenge John Cena for the championship at One Night Stand that year, and he won. Yeah. Yeah. He was actually WWE champion there briefly. That was the and, one too where like they were like if Cena wins we riot and all that shit. That was like the the event where all that was going on. And I think that's the event too where they threw his shirt back at him. Mm-hmm. Like which was fucking awesome. Like I can still remember that whole Yeah, the the two thousand five and two thousand six one night stand pay per views were freaking amazing to see live. Yeah. Um so they had a Hall of Fame introduction, which they still do to this day. Um, mean Gene Okerlund had Tony Atlas, I think Sensational Sherry, Vern Gagne, Refrigerator Perry, um, the Black Jacks, and Eddie Galero. I think, didn't he pass away either that year or the year before that? Like it was like, it was pretty recent because uh, one of the uh, angles when you get down to another match was about, uh, I don't know if you remember this or not, but I couldn't fucking believe they did this either. Do you remember the Randy Orton fucking, um, interview or the promo where he was talking about Eddie's in hell and all that yeah. shit? Like that well, was that around was, this time. I think that man. was a little bit later though. I don't think they did that. It was a year or two later, but I may be wrong. I don't know. But, um, yeah, you had, uh, Vicky Guerrero was there. Uh, to accept for Eddie as well. So that was a great Hall of Fame class there. And look at how many of those people passed away since then. I think both of the Blackjacks is gone. Uh, mean Gene, Vern Gagne. Um, so, yeah, uh, Sherry, she's no longer around. Yep. Next matchup is another weird one to watch. It was the United States Championship, JBL versus Chris Benoit. Who's the champion? I just can't watch any of his matches anymore. Like, I don't know. It's yeah, I didn't watch. Feel. I watched the introductions and I fast forwarded it. Um, JBL won. Um, another funny aspect that I forgot about is Jillian Hall was JBL's uh, assistant or whatever. And this was after the boogeyman ate her fucking mole off the side of her face or whatever it was. <laughs> That was, that was so great. <laughs> she had that uh, fucking mole, and then, yeah, that was the way that they got rid of it. That's why they explained it. They had tons of, uh, uh, you know, flashbacks and, and stories and stuff about... And this was around the time when they had the Saturday Night Main Event specials on NBC again. I don't know if you recall that. It only They only had a handful of them before they quit. But yeah, this was right around when they started debuting those, and they were going over the the highlights for the Foley and Edge um, hardcore match, and they were showing some stuff from Saturday Night's Might have been on there, um, and this was kind of Mick Foley's swan song as far as in the ring when it comes to WWE. I don't think he did anything else after this. I think this was it. Yeah, I can still remember like the, the build up and everything to this match and i can definitely still remember the match because it's kind of like iconic now and if you don't remember the match then you at least remember the table spot which everybody kind of they still use right. it from time to time there was some crazy shit that they did with the steel uh steps too where he would like he threw a hip toss like he threw mick foley onto the steps the hip toss yeah. and that looked fucking nasty yeah and uh threw him into the you know the the steps and all that. So you mentioned that Joey Styles did some announcing on this one. Um, they did some pretty crazy shit. They had like Mick Foley was wrapped in barbed wire at the beginning of the match and he wrapped his arm in barbed wire and it was legit barbed wire. I mean, you could tell by his, his fucking arms and stuff, thumbtacks, fire spot at the end, which like you said, everybody still, that's one major um, you know, finale to the matches on here that people definitely recall still this day. Uh, but that was a great match, man. Those guys worked really well together. Well, and, you, uh, I mean, you remember at that time, that was right around the time when Edge really started to get like a main event kind of push. 
I think it might have been the combination of this match and like a couple other things that really got him over, so to speak, like as the rated R superstar gimmick and all that stuff. Because it wasn't too he wasn't too long into that gimmick when mm-hmm. this when this match happened. And um I think it I think it was this match that probably like helped him more than anything. And he was really, really starting to get over at this point too as like a heel. And Lita, man, holy shit. She looked fucking whew. Yeah. There's a well, few ladies was, in this, this is, show. Yeah. It's also had to be around that time he did the shit with uh you know, them coming out in the ring and making out and everything. It was. I think it was shortly before this, actually. Yeah. And her uh, titties were exposed live on TV. I remember that because I had yeah, the, her. I had the AVI file that on my computer for years. <laughs> Sitting there, yeah, like there's her titties. Look at them titties, <laughs> Lord. So Edge won that one. Great match for sure. Probably the match of the night, really. But I don't know. Yeah. We'll go on. The next one was just hilarious. This was during the beginning, I think, of the King Booker era. In uh, SmackDown, King Booker with uh, Queen Charmel versus the Boogeyman. This was, um, eh, whatever. It is what it is. It's the fucking Boogie. It was the Boogeyman was undefeated up to this point, Uncle Bill. You ain't gonna have. You mean tell me you can't have a good match with the Boogeyman? Oh Jesus! It was yeah, a I handicap match. Actually, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, Queen Charmel and Booker T versus the Boogeyman. I didn't watch it, but I'm betting at some, in some point it, there's a worm spot where he either like put worms on somebody or like try to get him to eat well, worms or something like that. Even better, he uh, boogeyman kissed Charmel with a mouthful of worms. There you go. I mean, there there can't be anything to this match. Yeah, but Booker T got beat by the boogeyman. That really? They must have really liked the boogeyman. That's what it says. <laughs> What the fuck? That's just bizarre. Yeah. Boogeyman executed a falling choke bomb on Booker for the victory. Well, Damn, I don't ever remember him. I remember him being over for like a week and then nobody cared. So I don't know what WWE Well, this was, was yeah, peak of, of the Boogeyman's reign. Boogeymania. <laughs> that was running wild. Yeah, Boogeymania. Um... Next one, too, like, this was kind of a, uh, let's see here, it would be the Trish Stratus Mickey James match. And this now, was, yeah, they, they built this for a long time, just for this mania spot. I was getting ready to say, this probably had, like, one of the best buildups of any match on that card, if not the best, because you remember around that time, like, Mickey James was a heel and she was playing like the psycho character, psycho stalker kind of character for Mickey James and or for shit, Trish Stratus. And um, she really, in the process of doing that, got over. I'm not sure entirely why now, like looking back on it, but like she was more over in that match than Trish Stratus was. That's no shit. Like people, oh yeah, well, the, for her. Trish Stratus had the cha- had the belt for like 448 days, is what they said. At this point. So I'm guessing the the fans was just sick of Trish Stratus, more than likely. But yeah, yeah, they brought Mickey James in a few months earlier as like a Trish Stratus mega fan. And she just did a great job of playing the fucking loon. Mickey yeah. James did. Um and they worked great together. This match was fucking like this is one that I watched all the way through. I mean they they just did a great job. Mickey James was extremely fucking hot around this time too. Jesus Christ. I'll yep. say that. Um, Trish Stratus would retire later on that same year. So she didn't have a whole lot of, I think she may have continued the feud a little bit with uh, Mickey James, but uh, she was pretty much done. I think after this, this is, a, if you watch this match, I'm not sure. Like, on Peacock, I'm assuming this is pretty much the same way. Like, they edited the part of this match out that probably has the most notoriety. Nope, they didn't it, edit it Is out. it in it? Is it still mm-hmm. in it? Oh, it was edited there for a long time out of, like, shit from WWE. Are you talking but, about uh, when uh, uh, Mickey grabbed her by the pussy? Yeah, and then did the thing, like the... 
No, it's in there. Is it I in saw there? it because I, I wrote it down. I was like, because I didn't even remember that. You didn't remember that? That's what got her fucking, like, basically ended her career. Like, I mean, after that, they, like, stopped her push, like, and everything because, like, she fucking did that one thing. I don't guess it was scripted, but yeah. Yeah, it was very odd, but yeah, it's totally in there. I don't know if it may have just kind of got by them. I'd say if they'd known it was in there, they would have took it out for sure. But that yeah, it's, it's, on, it's on Peacock if you want to see it. That shit was fucking hilarious. I don't care what anybody says. They should have just like left her alone. Yeah, I mean, she's great, and she still looks great, but man, back then, good Lord. Well, she's the but fucking yeah. TNA champion now, isn't she? Like the women's Hell champion? Yeah. Impact. <laughs> It's insane. Sorry. Impact. Yeah. Um, next matchup, Mark Henry, who sucked ass. And we talked about it numerous times. Yeah. How much he sucked ass around this time period. He had a match with the Undertaker as a casket match. <laughs> I didn't remember this at all. Not not in the fucking no. least. There's nothing to it either. It was, a sh- it was a fucking terrible match, I think. Yeah. I actually went back and watched some of it like because it was just the, the idea of it was just an abomination. But. Yeah, it was fucking bad. Yeah, so let's just go on from that. I think that was probably, aside from maybe King Kong Bundy, one of the worst opponents Undertaker ever had at Mania. Um, The next one, which is fun, and it it actually worked really well, too, and I watched most of this match. It's a no-DQ, no-count-out match with HBK versus Vince McMahon. Now, the the build-up to this match was if i if i can remember this correctly like every now and then like fucking vince would come back and he would do like the kiss my ass club and all that shit to set up some sort of like you know angle and i think he did that in this case and this was back when the fucking spirit squad was around and and all that shit and shane was around and i'm pretty sure that that's like like somehow or another Shawn Michaels took offense to the whole thing with like the kiss my ass club. I don't remember like who kissed his ass that pissed him off, but, and then he like Vince had the spirit squad beat the shit out of Shawn Michaels. And then Shane beat shit. Out. Like there was all kinds of like angles like that around that time. But right. what I didn't know and what I read while I was preparing for the show was that the only reason they did any of this shit was because they had to scrap the uh, Guerrero Shawn Michaels match that was originally planned after all that happened. That was like the original. Yeah, that was like a dream match. I mean, it, I yeah. think there was a couple of websites kind of talked about that right around when this mania happened, that that was the initial plan. And then they would later, oh, I, this is more or less a street fight. This was the spirit squad was in there. You remember them? Uncle Bill. Yeah, they sucked. Yeah. Nikki, Mikey, Dicky. <laughs> I mean, in a way it was it was both simultaneously a horrible idea for a faction and a fucking great idea. Like Vince is fucking jacked though. I did write that down. Like he was fucking like he had the H G H, you know, I V in his ass. Um and then they would you know, HBK wins, but they would have a rematch the next month. And they were talking about that not long after this. This was at Rupp Arena in Lexington. I think it was Backlash or something like that, whatever the pay-per-view was after that. And that was the one where it was Shawn Michaels uh, and God versus Vince and Shane McMahon. <laughs> I remember that. You remember that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was watching that. I don't know if I watched the pay-per-view, but I remember the lead up to it. And they was talking about it on TV that pissed my dad off. Like he was like, I would he say, was like, yeah. that's just ridiculous. That's sacrilegious. You know, do you remember that fucking promo Vince did where he was like in church or something? Yeah. And he was just like, hey, I mean, that was pretty, <laughs> oh God. even for then, I mean, you could get away with a lot more than you could now, but that was pretty like risque even for, you know, that yeah. point in time, because you'd pitch, if you were to piss off the wrong church group, I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I thought that they, they work well together and Vince was still, he was still able to do quite a bit at this point in time. This was 16 years ago, almost. Yeah. 
I think this is right around the time he was on Men's Fitness and all that, that cover that everybody remembers. That was around that year, I believe. Yeah. But I um, don't remember a whole hell of a lot from this match. Uh, like you said, I believe it was. It couldn't be anything else other than a street fight, really. A lot of plunder. They had some garbage, some of those crushable garbage cans. I don't know where the hell they get those things at, but, you know, they're they're paper thin and they kind of, they're like cardboard almost. Yeah. We need to get some of those and just start fucking hitting yeah. each other with them. Yeah. So after that, there was a world championship. And the I guess SmackDown had the old WCW championship belt, the world championships, yeah. what they called it. Rey Mysterio, which P.O.D. was performing his damn theme song when he come out there. Do you remember them? Unfortunately, <laughs> I do, yeah. Fucking P.O.D. Um, Randy Orton. Randy. Who had the Hey theme song at this point. Hey. Uh, Randy. <laughs> That's some shit. We fucking Every fucking Randy time. Orton. Yeah. yeah. Hi. <laughs> I still can't stand Randy Orton to be honest. No. Like, God damn, give it a break with that guy. At least they gave him some better theme music after that theme song was freaking like oh man. Yeah. That was that was one of the worst. Hi. That's how it would start off there. <laughs> like it didn't even have any open or riff or anything. It just start off Hi <laughs> And then a riff would play. <laughs> Diddy Diddy Hi Brandy Orton's. <laughs> there was there was that that one always killed me and then Edge too. <laughs> he still uses that song. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Every goddamn time he'd come out. Oh, God. oh shit. Uh, but it was a three-way match, Rey Mysterio versus Randy Orton versus Kurt Angle. And this was right at the tail end of Kurt Angle's run. This is he would he be heavy on the heavy on the blue pills at this point. Yeah. And he was in the blue brand on the blue pills. Yeah. But uh, he would be gone within like three or four months after this. They actually had a montage. And this tell you around the time, you know, Steve was loving life then because Shine Down was part of the montage video in this. I wrote that down <coughs> oh, too. Oh God. Um Ray, um, I think he won the the Royal Rumble, so he earned the right, and I'm not sure exactly why they did a three way match. But they were talking about Ray and I think everybody at the time kinda knew that due to the Eddie Guerrero thing that Ray was going to, they were going to finally give him a chance with the, with the championship. That was the lead up. I don't know if you remember that, but the lead up was that he was doing this like for Eddie, like he'd come out with the Eddie Guerrero shirts on and like, that was the whole kind of gimmick around that time. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, he had to win that. So yeah, he, he does win of course. And they, they have a little spot at the end with Chavo and, uh, Vicky Guerrero, where he kind of dedicates it to Eddie. Um, but the interesting thing is, is like, I think Angle was the champion going in. He pinned uh, Orton to to win the championship, if I'm not right. No, I might. Is that right? I don't think he pinned Angle. He pinned Orton. He did the, uh, he did the 619 and he did, what was the other thing? The West Coast Pop. Pop. The West Coast Pop. So it, I think that was on Orton. Was, yeah. It probably was on Orton, yeah. The West Coast Pop. Dan Williams is in here listening to us. Uh, that's a whole different show. Worst entrance music. Music, yeah. That'd be a good one, yeah. Chavos. I can't even remember. Uh, was it the one that said, ooh, a Chavo. Chavo. <laughs> it had like a... Sound like something you'd go into El Zul. Listen to <clears throat> So yeah, um but yeah that match was I don't remember that match being very long. And they had to have something to, to kinda calm the the fans down there so excited with all the action. So I did a P 
pillow fight match, Uncle Bill. You remember when they did uh, bullshit like this? I do remember that, but I don't remember this at all. Like I remember Tori Wilson being on in Playboy. I didn't remember Candace Michelle being in Playboy, but I guess that was the all the rage back then. Candace Michelle was fucking another one that was hot as hell around this time period. Yep. Um, I mean, it was just whatever. It's a fucking pillow fight match. <laughs> what what they gonna say. do? Yeah. There was uh, there was oh, one God. spot in it that was freaking hilarious. Tori Wilson had this little dog, much like little Princess Puffins you got. Right. And there was a spot where she smeared the dog's asshole in Candace's face. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, God, that's fucking hardcore right there. I did not know that, though. Yeah, really. yeah I thought that was... And then, like... Another thing I noticed about this match, too, is Candace's asshole was pretty sweaty. It almost looked like she shit on herself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so shit. if you go back and watch, yeah, she's got legit, like, panties on, like lingerie panties, like real thin. So I'm guessing her asshole was sweating. Oh, God. Wouldn't you like to clean <laughs> that up? But do they ever talk about her anymore? Like, I don't. You know, most of the other divas, like, usually have some sort of thing where they come back or something, you know. No, I think that she's had, she's one of them that's had a little bit too much work done. So she looked, she wasn't very old to begin with. She's probably maybe, what, in her late 30s at this point. She shouldn't have to fucking, you wouldn't think. But Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of. They never have her on there, though. She's never been on anything. Yeah, she wasn't much of a wrestler anyway to begin with, but she was killer. So this brings us to the main event, and this was interesting because you got to remember this was way back in two thousand six, and like I said, they're in Chicago. Triple H. I was wondering. I was thinking, was this one of them where Motorhead was performing out there? No, no. This was the Conan the Destroyer uh, Triple H intro. This and is the one I remember the most, though, of any intro he's ever had. Yeah, he, he looked very, very furry, and he looked kind of ridiculous yeah. sitting out there. Yeah. And they had, uh, I believe this was the debut of the King of Kings theme song. Um, so he was so good that he had to have two different theme songs performed by Motorhead. Yep. Which I got to give him credit, though. Both those same songs are fucking killer. They are pretty killer. <laughs> I have to say that. This is a period of time where I, w I had to go back and kind of watch some of the shit leading up to this to remember this, though. So this was when people were starting to turn on Cena. Right. This was the beginning of, like, people turning on Cena because prior to this, to this year anyway, like, he was pretty over, like, as, as over as anybody in that position could be. And people were kind of getting sick of Triple H because he had had the title for, I think, like three fucking years. Something like that, like on and off around that time. Yeah, they were between a rock and a hard place with this one, the fans <laughs> yeah. were. So, yeah, pick your poison, like Jack the Snake said. The um, Yeah, they, they had a big old entrance with Cena, too, where it was like a gangster's top what was it al capone is it al capone that was in chicago yeah yeah they were doing okay. like the gangsters of chicago or whatever yeah and he come out with a and this was the thing that i was surprised that they could do this in 2006 because this was after 9 11 he had a damn tommy gun with i guess dummy rounds in it or like took it out and shot it up in the crowd <laughs> i'm like damn boys <laughs> if i was there in the crowd i wouldn't have liked that Little known fact, though, a Tommy gun is one of the only fully automatic guns that's still legal in the U.S. Hmm. Wonder why. I guess because it's so fucking old that they figure, like, how much damage can you really do? Uh, CM Punk was also one of the gangsters dressed up at the entrance. I don't know if you knew that or not. You can actually see him if you look closely. I had heard something like that, but I never would have remembered that without going back and watching um, yeah, Cena was heavily booed throughout the entire match, really. It was a lot like this Trish Stratus thing. The ending of this match was very odd. I don't know if you went back and watched it or anything. I did, yeah. Like, you know, with the end, like the Hulk 
no, the Hulk Hogan matches back in the day where they drop his arm and on the third drop, it would be like, you know, right. So triple H does that. And then Cena automatically like reapplies the STFU and then triple H just taps out. <laughs> like I did not see that coming. Did no. they run out of time or what was the deal with that? I don't know. There had to be something to it. Like there's got to be some sort of controversy about that, I guess. I don't, I don't know. know if they just really wanted Cena to be over at that time. Like, well, it, it was. I think that around this time period too is when they really stopped listening to what the fans actually wanted, and kind of yeah. just did what they wanted to do. And they would over the next few years. I mean, you would see that more and more. Um, this this show though, watching it again, and this was the first time that I'd seen it since it happened. I'm pretty sure. Even though I didn't really know what all was, I didn't really recall all the stuff that was in it. The beginning of the show, it legit felt like felt like a big deal. It was like a big event, and honestly, like I can't say that for a lot of the more recent WrestleManias. It just Oh. Now, I'm not even saying due to the COVID ones or anything. It was just, it's lost its luster, I think, at this point. Yeah, I don't think you see shows like this really anymore. And I don't know how I even feel about them doing two nights of shows and stuff. Like, God damn, man. Like, how much shit <laughs> can you really... I think they're doing away with that after this year, though. The only reason so. they, they were doing that due to COVID, I think. Yeah. Um, so they wouldn't keep people in there so many hours or something. I don't know. But this was surprisingly like a really good WrestleMania. And I hadn't really remembered it that much until like the uh, going back and watching all these matches and the requests and everything that we got to do it. But this was surprisingly a pretty good fucking show. Yeah, um, I enjoyed it. I was, I was kind of shocked. I mean, it, um, looking back, I think that this was voted like the, in the top 10 of all the WrestleMania shows on, I think, I don't know if it was WWE.com or it was on one of those big websites, but yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. I did not recall anything hardly about it. So it was kind of fun to, to go back and revisit, um, this time frame. Um, and old Curly Jaws, who's way younger than us. <coughs> This was, I think, his first WrestleMania that he watched as a kid. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of weird. Like, we grew up in a certain era. So people that are a lot younger than us, they look at this like, you know, we would look at, like, WrestleMania three or something, you know? That's insane to think about, but that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, WrestleMania three was like, I don't know. It's one of those events that happened at the exact right time for us. And I guess that's the case with 22 for a lot of people of a different generation. So, yeah, that is it. That's WrestleMania. Oh. WrestleMania 22. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you something, though, like yeah. not related to WrestleMania or anything, but did you watch the uh, Vince McMahon interview? I Pat started. Did. I was going to watch it on Monday. And it was just so fucking insanely busy. I didn't get a chance to. I watched the. Did you watch the Brock Lesnar one that he did though? No, no, I didn't watch that one. Yeah, I liked. I did watch all that. That guy is actually really good at those type of shows. Which yeah, I think he's was, the most popular YouTuber, so it's probably why. It was bizarre too because I haven't seen. I couldn't even tell you the last time Vince McMahon did an interview like that. Um, like, it was, um, the stone cold one that he did like in some oh, yeah. 10 years yeah. ago, I guess they said but, that, but yeah, I need to check it out for sure. Um, because he doesn't yeah, do them very often and I'm sure there'll be some interesting shit that's asked in it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff, especially like stuff about Shane and all that. Yeah. I might check so it out watch tomorrow. It. Watch it. You asshole. I will. Mm. We actually did, though, on the past episodes of those Retro Wrestling Nights. We actually did a lot of shows that I completely forgot about. Do you remember us doing the Beach Blast 93? No. Yeah, we did Beach Blast 93. 
We did uh, the whole summer of Lex Express. That was a show. <laughs> we ran <that> all. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, we did. This one was, I actually checked this out again the other day. This one was legit fucking hilarious. We did. Do you remember when TNA did Hardcore Justice, the ECW tribute show? No. God damn, I don't remember that at all. And, uh, they tried to get fans to chant because they couldn't use the, they didn't own ECW. They couldn't say this was an ECW. Yeah. It was EV 2.0. They wanted you to chant EV 2.0. EV 2.0. 2.0. 2.0. EV 2.0. No. That's stupid. All right, boys. But uh, that is it. Hopefully everybody enjoyed. It's Retro Wrestling Night. It's back. Thanks to old Carly Jaws. Carly Jaws in the house. Carly Jaws is going to make you his bitch. Did you hear, before we get off here real quick, about the upcoming Brutal and Badass podcast with Metal Man and O'Curly Jaws, the two hosts. I 100% will listen to that fucking show because that's bound to be the greatest thing that's ever happened. I, I, offered, I threw the offer out there. I was like, I will put you on the Dead Pit feed. Yep. Deadpit.com. So we can get some people check out this insanity. Is it a podcast or is it like a, a video stream? I don't think they know yet. I, it's got to be a stream. That'd be the funny shit. I want to be a guest on that whenever it happens. <laughs> like just to be in the middle of that shit. Yeah. Oh. Especially like if you get both of them drinking. Oh like Curly Jaws drinks that gigant, them gigantic cans of beer. Guinness yeah. or whatever it is. You could murder somebody if you threw it and hit them in the head or whatever. That's how big the can is. Metal Man takes like fucking 50 shots for the straight liquor and then for dime bag. out. Yeah. Ooh. All right, boys, but that is it, and we will catch you guys next time over at deadpit.com. Give us the thumbs up. Up your butt. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a f if you do. I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't let's, care. let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you yeah. dare touch it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And click that bell. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. DeadPitOnPatreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows and fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. DeadPitOnPatreon.com if you're interested. Tears start at only $1.